I'm gonna Dennis. go grab a beer. You guys want anything? Okay, <laughs> thanks. More whiskey. Have you guys been watching the late night shows? Oh yeah, I I listen. Yeah. I think Seth Meyers is like the first thing that I I so I allow into my ears. I'm like a foul. I'm a Fallon and Kimmel guy. I go Myers then then Kimmel. John, I don't know if you watched Seth Meyers had, for me, it was the funniest. There's a lot of Trump jokes. This one was the funniest one. He was talking about just like visual, a visual comfort of what's going to come. He said, I forget, I'm going to butcher it, but he said something like, Trump looks like the feeling you get when you wake up on the couch at 3 a.m. and don't know what day it is. Dude, there are very few things that I'll like repeat to Heather that line, I was like, Seth Meyers just said, Trump is the human embodiment of when yes. you wake up in the morning on the couch and you forget what happened. And <laughs> that's and exactly like, I, what it is. It's like you try to make it up as you go along. You're like, oh, I was here because I wanted to be and I was watching a movie. And and uh, we have this hydroxy uh, oqua tens in one, quaunsa, a logic. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck did uh, I walk back into? <laughs> John Oliver on HBO. Yes. So a a pretty funny show, but he moved it to his house, of course. And there's no laugh track or no audience to laugh. Part of his humor is being sarcastic. So he makes these sarcastic jokes and you're just waiting for people to laugh. And it's uh, like nothing's there. Yeah. You're like, did everyone get that? That's why I love Kimmel. Kimmel, you don't have, like, I don't think he needs an audience. Like, all Kimmel's stuff is so good. That's so true, Chris. Like, while I'm listening to Kimmel, I don't notice the audience not being there. I like, I actually like, like, I kind of like his show more. I like, I I like. Uh, Yeah. Oliver's show is funny. There's no audience, no laugh. All his, like, things that go on in the background. Now it's just kind of like a news show. It's not as, Kimmel's, I think Fallon's, too, is almost funnier from their house and, like, their current setup. I think Fallon's much funnier. He's Fallon yeah. is the only well, one that I haven't really tuned into. Like I love Jimmy Fallon, but he's on NBC, he's on the Tonight Show, so he's not yeah. nearly as funny as he as he can be. But now, you know, with the rules kind of loosened a tad, I feel like he probably is allowed to be funnier. He does his monologue like in his kids' playroom, and they're like yeah. color behind him, and yeah. I mean it's just. And it, it's it's already funny. Like I even yeah. before he says anything, just the dynamic and like he's like, you guys like popcorn, and they're like just chomping in the back and like <laughs> ignoring him. <laughs> it's like oh, dad's playing TV again. Have you guys so watched cool. Netflix Dave Chappelle Mark Twain Award? No. Have you watched no. it? No. So they put no. up. The, they just put it up. It's Dave Chappelle got the Mark Twain Award in DC and all these big time people come out and like, just it's like a roast or tell story sort of thing. And he wins the award. Obviously I was I watched it last night. I was crying laughing. Do you know, Neil Brennan, who Neil yeah, Brennan yeah. Is? created yeah. the Chappelle show. So he created it. So he tells the story about creating so half baked. Like it wasn't as big as, as big into half baked, but he, then he starts talking about the Chappelle show. The stories behind it are unbelievable. He said, Chappelle called him and was like, Hey, I think I gotta. We we should make a weed movie and present it to whoever. And Neil Brennan's like, oh, okay. And he's like, so then, <laughs> he said we have to do it in two weeks. And he said, thirteen days in, he calls me again and goes, hey, remember we have to make that weed movie for, <laughs> for whatever. And Neil Brennan said, yeah, yeah, that's tomorrow. He said so for seventeen hours they just worked together and wrote it and and present the half and present the half bake. Holy shit. Wow, but then he talks so about good. he talks about the Chappelle show and it's the stories are just unbelievable. I had no idea there was like a nerdy white guy behind the success of the Chappelle. Show. He's amazing and he had this special on Netflix called Three Mics. Yeah. Where he does like three different versions of stand up. Yeah. Like he does like a stand up and then he does like a deep just he just tells you a story about his life. It's not funny at all. It's like very deep. Uh, and then something else. Maybe yeah. totally. I never, I never saw anything. He I never saw like, anything. It, it made me a fan like, immediately. Yeah, yeah, I don't really he does know. One liners, only one line. Joke. Right. That, yeah, he had it written down. It was just one line. Like, like a personal monologue, and then like what you would consider like a standard stand up. Yeah. But he moves from one mic to the next. So the there. only reason I know him that he was part of the Chappelle show. There's one. I don't remember this. There's a, a skit in the Chappelle show where it's like 
Chappelle's a slave and he's getting whipped and they're doing like the outtakes and oh yeah Kunta Kinte. He whipped, and he shoots the slave master and the guy like <laughs> and the audience doesn't laugh and he goes so I guess it was just me and Neil who thought it was funny for me to shoot a slave master and then he explains all of these things, like all the most outrageous ones, it was only him and Neil Brennan that said, yeah, you, you, you have to do that. Oh, so oh, wow. So it was like they were on the same page on everything. It uh, sounded like, it sounded that way. Then Neil Brennan basically said, like how he was ending it was like, you know, I, you know, he gives me a lot of credit for doing the Chappelle show. He goes, but your favorite lines in Chappelle show ever? And he'd like, they played clips of them, like the top five lines what? ever. He goes, every what? single one of them, the Rick, Rick James, James thing, I didn't write a word of it. I wrote a I wrote a script, and Dave went off and did his own thing. For like that, um, the the Clayton Bigsby thing. Like there was a couple other ones that are like really popular. That <laughs> what did the five fingers say in the face? <laughs> Slap. It's like forty five minutes or an hour or something. But like Bradley Cooper comes up. I forgot they did that. Um, he was in what's it called? Um, yeah, Stars Born. Stars Born. Yeah. And he said Bradley Cooper was like in tears, but that's just Bradley Cooper. But he was saying like that. In all the movies he's been in, he, that was like the most emotional scene he's ever done with Dave Chappelle. Is Bradley Cooper not the best actor? Oh, he's the greatest. Oh, he's awesome. I love him. I love him in everything he does. Awesome. Anyway, go watch it. Highly recommend. Yeah, you can edit this part. I'm just, I'm just stating the name of a character. I, I, it doesn't count. <laughs> you can edit the whole Todd Van Poppel part, Phil. Oh, oh, no. that, no. I want that release first. Release That's the first. opening. It was a great TV fucking TV card. card. I want to know how many times he said the word Todd Van Poppel during that sequence. Right. You know, it, it wasn't overused. I give it an over under a four. I, I was going to say four is my number too, actually. So you really Vegas. thought? I really thought you guys would have would have been with me on that one. So, do you guys think people are strangely defensive of the brands that they? are loyal to.